Hey everybody, it's Car Ray Rob. I'm Ray. I'm Rob. Today we're giving you our before and after movie review for the Netflix original Okja. Right. We did our trailer reaction video for this a couple months back, and yes, man, we did. ever since then I've been so pumped to watch this movie. Me too. It's definitely been circled on the calendar for a while. We've been waiting for this day. Yeah, Bong Joon Ho is a great director. We're both huge fans of Snowpiercer. The yeah. cast in this movie is fantastic. Tilda Swinton, Paul Dano, Jake Gyllenhaal. So many reasons to love this movie already, and we haven't even watched it yet. So I don't even know what else I can say. Yeah, why haven't we watched it? Let's yeah, go watch it. Let's go thing. watch it right now. We'll let you know what we think. So we said in our trailer reaction video that this drew a lot of comparisons to Free Willy. And I have to say I'm a little disappointed that it was just that. A little disappointed is maybe yeah. a fair term. I like the movie. I thought I was going to love it, though. There's rewatchability. Sure. Um, but there is a slight disappointment. Um, but maybe that's not fair. Maybe our expectations were too high. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. You know, uh, one we, we said before we watched the trailer, we've been super pumped for this movie. We were really kind of putting our expectations from Bong Joon Ho on this movie, uh, thinking about what Snowpiercer was and what yeah. this movie could be, and you know the cast involved, Tilda Swinton and Paul Dano, both especially, you know, right. and Jake Gyllenhaal. Even you know they do those kind of real meaty characters. Not that they weren't, but there's usually you know a lot of ulterior motives, and there's like all this kind of like plot twists yeah. and stuff like that. And this movie really was an A to B story about a girl and her trying to save her pet slash friend. Nothing wrong with that. No. But like you said, just kind of linear and straightforward. And I think if we wrap our heads around that, we might like it more. Yeah. Yeah. If I think if I watched it again, mm -hmm. when I didn't have those expectations, I think I, I Take may, it for what it is. Yeah, exactly. I think my, my out going feelings might be a little bit different. Let's start with what I think is probably a, a positive for the movie is the two main characters, Okja mm -hmm. and Misha. If you kind of look at it for what I feel like this movie actually is, and I do feel like this is Bong Joon Ho's take on a kid's movie. Uh, Don't show your kids it, but. Right, yeah, and, that, and that, <laughs> right, let's quantify that. Like, I mean, there are definitely scenes in this movie that are not suitable for children. There are a lot that are. Yeah, exactly, especially around those two characters. And that guy's, you know, it's like a peach dragon type, she worked really, really well. The opening scenes where they were really diving into their relationship, you know, on the farm, I, I think that really solidified the amount that she really cared for this creature, and you could understand why she went to the lengths that she did yeah. to get her back. I will say, I thought maybe a couple of those scenes were a little draggy, but I understand the importance of it. They were all very entertaining in their own right. Like, I really found a lot of those scenes to be as powerful as they can. I mean, you're building a relationship with the audience from zero. Yeah, absolutely. And within 15 minutes, you're like, oh, I want to be their friends too. I want right. to live there. Right. I think that's successful. I think they did a really great job of explaining that Okja wasn't just like a dumb creature. She was really hyper intelligent. I mean, really that scene where Okja saves Misha on the, the cliff, I thought was, I mean, that one just nailed it. But that, I thought they kind of maybe downplayed that later. Like, you never really saw her be that smart again. Like, I, that's she fair. was never able to save herself. And I feel like there were maybe were some situations where they could have figured some stuff out based on what they displayed there. But I felt like they set up her being really smart. I think also for the emotional aspect because you didn't want to see her get killed. Now Misha, I thought her character was really good. Really driven, um, really determined. And I thought for a young actress, she played her really strong. It's funny. She kind of really towed this line between very cold and very driven, mm -hmm. but very heartfelt at the same time. You knew more the intent of why she was doing these things. Yeah. And that's where the heartfelt aspect of it came in. But she herself, at a lot of times, kept her emotions very bottled up but I think that was also for the effect of the movie especially when she was you know taken in by the Rand Mirando Corporation you could see that she was just growing more and more frustrated but she was going with the flow knowing that you know I'm gonna get Okja back like that's yeah. what I'm hoping to get out of this but you could see that bubbling and I felt like she kind of had like a really understated um, understanding of adults mm -hmm. and adult culture so I think she knew a lot of times when the Miranda company was trying to play her in turn she was kind of playing them because she's like I'm only doing this to get to Oaks I'm not really doing like she never really did what they wanted her to do she right. did it her way only yeah so I felt like in a way she was always using them right back which I thought was you know a good way to use her character you know I couldn't go another minute without talking about Tilda Swinton. She's her favorite. Yeah. She delivered a performance for a character that I absolutely would see her playing. You know, she had some really interesting kind of creepy moments, and then she had some really interesting, almost heartfelt, altruistic moments. It was also interesting because she kind of had two whacks at it. She also played Nancy, Lucy's twin sister, who was completely different, so she kind of got to play the opposite character as well. But 
I will say with these two opposing characters, I still feel like it was a little bit lost in translation. Tilda, there's not many other women that could do what she does. Yeah. Like no, when she I plays a character, it's her stamp on it's her character. Don't, yeah. Nobody else try. But in this movie, it does feel like maybe you would expect more from her. A little bit meatier of a role or maybe just a little bit more character development. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like it was really close. Mm -hmm. Like they're somewhere between the two sisters combined. Like if there was another scene maybe between the two, yeah. you could have really fleshed them both out a yeah. little bit because I mean, I think an interesting thing to think about with those two sisters is really who is more evil. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, um, who we spend most of our time with, speaks about Nancy, the sister, as if she's like this really evil, terrible person. But they don't really ever show you anything really that makes you necessarily feel like she's that evil. And yeah. Lucy is just as evil, I guess. Yeah, if you kind of stack them up side by side, in some ways Lucy is more evil than Nancy because when it comes to Lucy, you know, she plays this, you know, environmentalist CEO, but, you know, behind it, she's still kind of this corporatist. And she's not unknowingly lying. Lying about the GMOs and their food and all of this type of stuff. When Nancy enters the story fully, you know, she's just the cold, calculating corporate CEO. And she's, this needs to be done, this needs to be done, it's all about the money, and that's it. And while I understand that is inherently evil in a lot of ways, as far as this movie goes, yeah. You could respect the honesty. Her motives are clear, whereas Absolutely. opposed to a liar like Nancy, she's trying to trick people into right. liking her, where Nancy's not trying to get anybody to like her at all. She's just trying to do her job. Right. Spoiler alert. The end scene where, you know, uh, Mija actually buys Okja from Nancy, that was a prime moment if they were going to make Nancy evil for them to do it. No, no, we're going to kill her. It doesn't matter. No, whatever you right. pay us, it doesn't matter. Just on principle alone. If you switch those roles and it was Lucy in that situation, I don't think Lucy would have done it at all. For Tilda Swinton's character, it might have been better if they kept it one person. She just had that, maybe that relationship with her father mm -hmm. figure who they mention, but we don't ever meet. You know, just kept that the relationship that she's dealing with and just make Lucy have that complicated decision at the end of the movie. Have to reveal her true evil, that she right. is the most evil one of the, in the family. Right. Or that she's not. Right. She has some kind of, maybe a moment of redemption. Yeah, no, absolutely. Let's also talk about Jake Gyllenhaal while we have a chance. I feel like he probably took the biggest risk character-wise here. Yeah. He, I mean, he definitely plays his character way out there on mm -hmm. the edge. TV show host, um, you know, animal lover and guy who then becomes the face of a food conglomerate. And then you kind of just see his character deteriorate throughout the movie. You get the feeling, even from his first scene, that he's already some kind of a wash-up. And you kind of get that through the rest of the movie because people kind of treat him like, eh, you're just kind of this weird face, the crap pile. They just keep piling it on, piling it on, and right. you can kind of see it weighing him down as the movie goes on, and he does kind of break at one point. Probably I think, one of the more powerful scenes of the movie, I no, thought. No, I agree, and you know, I feel like for him, that was kind of the end point for him in a way. Like, yeah. he does come back, obviously, later in the movie, and there's another logical end point for him. But at this point, like, I do feel like any humanity that he had, any likability that he had with the audience, I think completely went away with this one scene. Yeah, I kind of felt like they were trying to set him up for some kind of redemption. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he becomes a good guy type thing or he earns maybe you know, some respect back. You end up getting to a point where he's just so broken that he can't, like it's yeah. not it's not with him anymore. And, and I think that's a strong character choice as well. I actually probably could have used more of him. I thought he did a good job. Yeah. His role was limited, but it served its purpose. Yeah, and in the details I thought in his character was great. You know, like his ability to change voices on a whim, you know, so he's got, you know, natural that high pitched kind of squeaky voice that yeah. you know it's really annoying but then when he gets that on, on camera. camera it's like oh you know, and it's like and he, and he changes it on a dime which yeah. I think is really great um, you know I, I have to say you know as Jake Gyllenhaal has gotten older I, I've started to appreciate him more as an actor I mean for a long stretch of time I really didn't care much for him. This I thought was really great. Nightcrawler very recently was also really great. And it's just really nice to see him kind of even take a step back and not be a leading a role and kind of mm -hmm. doing the supporting character, but really still kind of knock it out of the park. Yeah. All right, so I kind of get a, a twofer on this one because I'm such a fan of Tilda Swinton. I'm also a huge fan of Paul Dano. Again, just like Tilda, it's a character that I absolutely see him playing and I thought he did it admirably, but you know, again, kind of being a Bong Joon-ho movie, I expected a little bit more from the character, not from the performance. He serves the plot. Yeah. Um, he, Absolutely. you know, he's interesting along the way as he does it. But I just think you were expecting there to be another level to his character. Yeah. That wasn't there. Like he was at face value. What he said he was, he was. Yeah. And he's got some dark moments in there. Sure. But for the most part, he just 
he just rides a straight line. I, I get that, and I think one way to look at it is I, I've been trying to kind of avoid the free willy comparisons because they're there, but I you know I don't want to beat it over the head. But I do feel like in the in the, the Paul Dano character especially, it's really prevalent because he strikes me as that trainer father figure in one of those types of movies. Really, they're just there to serve the the kid right. to get the animal from point A to point B, and that's it. You know, there's not some alternate like, ulterior motive motive or anything like that like they're really just there to to act as the the realistic vehicle for the kid getting from point a to point b his Oak path with back. nisha is the same <laughs> right so it's that's what we're talking about it being a linear source like they're doing the same exact thing right exactly he works in that respect i mean i i, I don't find it flat per se i just was expecting, like you said, just a little bit more. Like maybe, like you said, maybe a plot twist or something like that. A little bit more depth. His performance was spot on. It was exactly what I would have expected from Paul Dano. He did absolutely everything he could with the part that he had. We can't, you can't review this movie and not talk about the references or the observations that this movie makes on like food industry and GMOs. Some people, I think that it's heavy handed. I think some people don't. So where do you think you lie? I guess I can see both sides of the argument. Yes, there are are some definite handy heavy-handed moments you know they are making it seem like GMOs are bad because the Miranda Corporation is essentially lying about them they're in their food but they're not gonna tell you that they're in their food they're right. telling you that they're not as far as you know Bong Joo Ho making a grand declarative statement on GMOs in the food industry nah, I think he kind of did a good job of maybe writing that middle line and kind of leaving it to the audience member to really decide that for themselves yeah I think because you know to me a big thing with it with what the movie is is kind of saying is the Miranda company isn't bad for having GMOs. They're bad for how they're lying about it and that they're telling you that they don't. You can then, I have the beholder, pick and choose where you think that evilness lies and what, how they're treating these super pigs as well is right. a different story because they do have also the scene where it's like they show a lot of the mutated versions which sure. it's kind of talking about the future where GMOs could go with science. Uh, you know, science being all sciencey. Rick's going to solve everything. Have faith. He, he's gonna let the audience kind of pick and choose. He's pointing it out. He's and even the end where they're talking about you know there's there's the ending of the movie takes place at a slaughterhouse. Right. I felt like it was more to add drama to like is Okja gonna get saved here more than putting a stance on look how this is treated. Right. I think ultimately what I would say is. If you go into this movie already being against GMOs, you're going to continue to be against GMOs and you may feel stronger for it. If you go into this movie not necessarily having a stance on GMOs, I don't think it's going to make you feel one way or the other. Definitely the opportunity if that was what they were trying to do for Bong Joo Ho to do it, you know, because there was really no mention of what these pigs do to you when you eat them. There was no weird after effects or anything like that, you know, so they didn't go into that side of it and I feel like if they were going to really make a grand declarative statement about that, they would have to go into that aspect of it. Otherwise, like I said, I, the viewer, that's really who's going to decide what this movie's stance is on GMOs. Yeah. So, you know, in closing, as we were watching the movie, you know, I know at least on my end, I, when I started realizing, well, this doesn't look like it's going to be the movie that we ultimately thought it was going to be, uh, I, I did start feeling that disappointment. However, ruminating on it, speaking to you more about it. I do feel like I'm appreciating it more now than I did when the credits rolled. I think the movie, like, upon rewatching it, is going to probably leave a better taste in my mouth than yeah. maybe it does currently. And I think that's because, you know, the expectation that I had, and we kind of said, you know, is this going to be a new generation Free Willy, like a Bung Joon Ho take on a Free Willy movie? No, I agree, you know, and I said it before, like, this is definitely... Bong Joo Ho's take on a kids movie. It is not a kids movie, but it is his take on a kids movie. Close as he'll get. Yeah, absolutely. Close as he'll get. And I think, you know, really with the expectations that you and I both had, we were really putting a different lens on this movie than I think what we really needed to. It is a good movie. It works for the movie that it is. It, is it the movie we thought we were going to get? No. We just, we have to, at least for me, you know, I've been coming, I guess, getting my mind to the point where I can really frame it in and appreciate it for the movie that it is, not the movie that I thought it was going to be. There is some fairness in that, but I feel like there's some unfairness too. Like the reason why you had those initial opinions though is partly because of what the trailer shows and partly because of the reputation a lot of these actors and director have. When they don't 
give us something to that quality. I don't know if you can just say, well, they didn't try to, so right. it's okay that they didn't. That That's the word, is quality. You know, that's where my hang-up is. It's like, okay, was this movie not a quality movie? Well, it was. Like, it was a quality movie. Like, it was a good story. It was acted well. Did it have the twists and turns that we would have expected from Bong Joon-ho? No. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's what you weigh more as a movie watcher. Linear story versus more keep you on your toes type story. Like right. the character development, the character plots. Because, you know, I kind of told you, I wish almost every character had one other scene that trying to add one more thing to the character. You know, so it's like how, how much, how important is that to you? And sure. that's going to be different for every person. I think initially for us or for me, I wanted a little bit more. But like I said, upon rewatchability, I think I'll probably favor it. It would probably stand in better favor. And so Rob, let's just finish up. You know, in case somebody who's watching this hasn't quite seen the movie yet, what should they do? Should they watch the movie? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I don't think there's any question that you should check out this movie. Like, it's definitely worth your time. I don't think you'd feel bored or your time was wasted watching this movie. Uh, and, you know, we brought up the whole aspect of the linear storyline. Like, that doesn't make a movie bad. Like, right. having a linear storyline does not make a movie bad. It's just not what we were expecting. So, you know, absolutely. Like, knowing that going in, you may actually enjoy it more on your initial run than you and I did. So, but definitely watch it. Yeah, if you're a fan of Tilda Swinton, Paul Dano, Bung Joon-ho, watch the movie. You might not say it's your favorite movie of any one of those people, but it's going to be one of your, it's, you're going to enjoy it. If you like those people, you'll enjoy this movie. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. That's it from us. But we want to know what you think about Okja. Do you think there was a clear stance on GMOs? Did you think this met the standards of a Bong Joo ho film? Let us know in the comments below. Then hit the like and subscribe button so you can catch all of our upcoming videos. Until then, this is Car Ray Rob. I'm Ray. I'm Rob. You know, dude, I myself dabbled in pacifism once. Not in Nam, of course. Then you know he's got emotional problems, man. You mean beyond pacifism? He's fragile. Very fragile. I did not know that.